Let's talk about Mexico now. Uh, let's go to the next part here. So President Biden is actually set to visit Mexico. And what's happening right now in Mexico is genuinely completely insane. We have some video of a full-blown war that has broken out um, in Culiacan between the Mexican army and the drug cartels after the Mexican army actually captured the son of El Chapo in what was supposed to be a show of force and of law enforcement and is now threatening widespread violence across the entire state of Sinaloa. Let's go ahead and put this on the screen. We have a little bit of a video from down in Mexico where they could show and what they're being narrating is that a police plane was actually hit by the Mexican drug cartels. You've got trucks which are literally on fire in the street. This was all after the capture of one of El Chapo's sons in Sinaloa. And they are threatening a full outbreak of war in the province. Already we've had uh, Mexican army officers and uh, people who were killed, multiple cartel gunmen. I was actually in Mexico uh, when some of this started breaking out and people were talking about it. And look, the circumstances here are nuts. Let's go and put the next one up there. The Guardian actually did a decent job of laying out some of the terror on the streets of Culiacan after the arrest of El Chapo, which, you know, previously his arrest and others had led to major shootouts and showdowns between the army. This is a major show of force, which was scheduled by AMLO, the Mexican president, to show the United States and President Biden that they were taking the war to the drug cartels. Unfortunately, it is now threatening, you know, domestic major domestic turmoil in the state because it's a direct challenge, obviously, to the Mexican government authority. President Biden is actually scheduled to bring up some of the fentanyl, um, some of the fentanyl coming across the U.S.-Mexico border. And this is all in the context of geopolitics. So it's setting up a real problem for the Biden visit to yeah. Mexico for AMLO. Uh, as I was telling you, I was just in Mexico and I'm not going to pretend I was in a tourist area, so I don't get a full view. But yeah, right. from the people that I spoke <laughs> too. I did my best in my limited Spanish. They're very popular. Ammo is very popular, but the cartels are the one thing that they all bring up. They're like, look, the idea that it all ended with El Chapo is a dream. We have this new generation. They're like, if anything, it's worse than ever. You know, the lack of law and order here is a disaster. And I just want to say, you know, for the working class Mexicans, some of whom I was able to meet, I mean, they're the ones who suffer the most. Oh, absolutely. They, they get taxed disaster. by the government and the cartels. Yeah. And they are, I mean, they, they, to they, live in fear of violence. They and... told me some stories, right, about taxi drivers who were, weren't paying the cartels, who were literally just shot in the head Jesus in the middle Christ. of the street. Wow. Um, as a reminder to the rest of them. And it, it's very uncomfortable, right, uh, to, to acknowledge some of that on their end. But what you can see here is a breakdown um, in what was ostensible some order in Mexico. And it's all really because of a show of force by the Mexican government ahead of Biden right. and also some of the demands the Biden administration <laughs> making there and well, reminds you of who some of the real victims of some of this stuff are. Biden, one of the demands he wants to make of AMLO is for them to do more to right. stop the, you know, the trafficking of drugs across the border. And so, yeah, this was an attempt to show like, ah, look, mm -hmm. we're, we're on top of it. And, uh, it was kind of predictable, too, because this is basically exactly what happened. This isn't the first time that this dude uh, was detained by Mexican authorities. And last time when uh, they detained him and there was a huge outbreak of the same sort of warfare and fighting and violence. Um, and so they let him go. Yeah. So it was not a surprise that it would provoke a similar sort of reaction because, hey, last time it worked, so why not try again? So the reason that so much of this focused around this airport is because they were uh, flying him to actually the same Supermax prison that his mm -hmm. that daddy escaped from previously. Mm -hmm. um, but they were trying to prevent his plane from taking off from this airport. And so I read accounts of people who were checking in and all oh, hell. I mean, they think they're just like going to the airport, going on their business trip or their vacation or whatever. Yeah. And all hell is breaking loose at this airport. So total insanity. I, I think my understanding is last I, I was reading last night um, that the violence seems to have calmed down since they were able to successfully like remove him and yes. take him to the supermax prison. But it just shows you the, the brazenness and uh, the, you know, the the high level that they feel that they can operate at effectively. Also, though, we shouldn't take the, with that violence. They're actually threatening and they're saying, look, if you do not return him to us, they're like, we're going to have even more violence that breaks out in the region. So it mm. is not a guarantee right now um, in terms of what the cartels communicated remain. to the government. And they also know that it would be a massive embarrassment to them if they were to have uh, even more violence happening in the country while President Biden is there as well. So, look, it's a it's a total nightmare uh, for 
for the Mexican government. And it could also put some egg on Biden's face to have uh, such level of like disrespect and just disorder, like while he's yeah. in the country as well. It, it's also game of whack-a-mole. I mean, you know, they took out daddy and guess what? Son took over. I mean, and actually a lot of times when you have a leadership vacuum, after you remove one drug kingpin is when the most violence yeah, occurs violence. because then you have turf wars between the various cartels and gangs trying to fight over who's gonna have what territory and you have leadership wars over who's gonna take control of the reins. So, I mean, it's just, it's a dis utterly disastrous situation is the bottom line. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just wanna give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.